very good Monday morning to you and thank you so much for tuning in, in to Why in the Morning. My name is Dereva Hillary. This morning we're looking into matters health and law. We want to see how uh, people living with HIV and tuberculosis, how the treatment is and how, what are some of the problems they go through. I am joined in studio by a team uh, from the Kenya Legal and Ethic Issues Network on HIV and AIDS as well as NTB. Uh, I have Timothy, Timothy uh, Wafula, Stephen Nanguva, and Vivian Atino are my guests this morning. Keep it Y254. Send in all your comments or questions to all our social media platforms at Y254 channel. My handle is at Murani Hillary. Welcome to the program. I want to begin with you, uh, Timothy. Uh, your organization began so many, many, many years ago, and it was established in Accra, Ghana, to focus on creating a country based on network that interest intersect low ethics, human rights, and HIV. So the question would be, why was this important? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning uh, to all the viewers. So Kelin, which is the Kenya Legal and Ethical Issues Network on HIV um, and AIDS, mm -hmm. was established in 1994, as you've right, rightly said. Uh, that was a time that uh, the HIV um, the issues of HIV had had um, just arisen. Uh, there was a lot of issues. People did not understand many, 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 many uh, problems that were coming up at that time. And uh, so the Kelin was formed as a result of um, the problems that were arising at that time in relation to HIV and mostly legal and ethical issues. So given that um, there was a lot of stigma, there was a lot of discrimination, and this was giving rise to many legal and ethical challenges that, 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 uh, that were arising. People living with HIV were being discriminated against, uh, they were being uh, disinherited, uh, they were being uh, um, uh, sacked from their jobs, and all those things. People did not understand what HIV was, and because of that lack of information, it was giving rise to many legal and ethical problems. So Kelin as an organization is an organization that focuses uh, on promoting and protecting the right to health of the vulnerable and the marginalized. So it was formally registered in 2001 mm -hmm. and it, has, um, it works across all, uh, it works with to protect the rights of people who are marginalized, people who are living with HIV, uh, uh, and focuses on promotion of health rights for all the ma marginalized communities. So as at the moment, Kelin works um, under four, four areas. It focuses on HIV and TB, and this focus on HIV and TB uh, primarily relates to protecting the rights and how do we work around protecting the rights of people who are living with HIV and people who are affected by TB, mostly by ensuring that the laws and policies that are put in place do not uh, pro protect their rights, promote their rights and do not infringe on their rights mm -hmm. so that we have uh, an, a sound legal framework in place to ensure that um, uh, the, the rights of people are protected. Mm -hmm. So that's primarily what Kelin does. And uh, it also works uh, in other departments. Uh, the sexual health and reproductive health rights works uh, on women, land, and property rights, and also works with key and affected uh, populations. Uh, key and affected populations, mm -hmm. in this sense, relate to people who are um, at a higher risk of contracting HIV due to mostly legal, uh, social and cultural exclusion that is there. Uh, and in this case, um, the government and all actors in the HIV field recognize that they are key and vulnerable given that they are excluded from the community, especially, for example, sex workers, uh, men who have sex with men are injecting drug users and other vulnerable populations. Mm, sure. Yes. Okay, we will be getting to those vulnerable population and maybe how you have been able to 
counter the, the problems they are going through. I, I want to come to you with, uh, with these statistics that this is the latest, Vivian. In 2018, 1.6 people were living with HIV in Kenya and uh, HIV incidence per 1,000 infected the number of uh, new HIV infections among the uninfected population over one year among all people of all ages was 1.02. Now HIV prevalence, it is believed to, ha to have the highest percentage of 14.7 percent between the ages of 15 to 49, and 46,000 people were newly infected with HIV in uh, back in 2018. Uh, by 2018, that is, and 25,000 people died from an AIDS-related illness. For the for the period of time that your organization has been operational, these are the people. 1.6 people million th people have been those who are having HIV how how has the organization advocated for their right to get treatment because that is one of the things that you do okay good morning um, one of the things that maybe my organization has done is uh, I work under BLAST also and I am under Stop TB partnership and as a BLAST member we what we advocate for is we go to institutions, we mostly, because when you look at the rate of infection, HIV infection amongst us, the youths, mm -hmm. it's very high. So mostly we go to the institutions and uh, they, we sensitize people. We can talk to them and uh, we also give out the condoms. And before you even give a condom to a fellow youth, mm -hmm. some people do not even know how to use the condom. And uh, some may tell you, sorry, I quote this, some may say that we prefer not to use uh, Mm -hmm. Not to eat a sweet with the wrapper. I'd rather use minus the wrapper. Mm -hmm. So we try so much to put them into into in, into a way that they can use it. And mostly, most of them do not know how to use the CDs. Mm -hmm. And this the F2, the female condom. Most fem women don't prefer using it because it looks like it's so f so funny. So you have to go to an extent of, you have to work with the samples of the models of the vagina thing, mm -hmm. and you have to sample up on how it is used. Mm -hmm. So basically we talk to the youths, we go to the institutions that is in campuses, we got the BLAST campus hut thing. Mm -hmm. That is where we go to most of the schools, and we even go to the communities where we go to the border borders. People, we talk to them also, and we tell them, we just try to advise them on what precautions that they can take in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Stephen, how about the TB? Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Stephen Amubashikoli. I'm the national coordinator of the network of TB champions in Kenya. So uh, why we came up with a network of TB champions is because uh, previously we had people that are affected or living with tuberculosis used to face a lot of violation, a lot of stigma silently. Then Kelin came up with a case of uh, TB is not a crime where we had a case where people were, were being put to prison because of having TB, but they were not given the correct information. So through that process, when Kaylin won the case, then the government brought in the directive that people with TB are supposed to be protected and are supposed to be supported to adhere to treatment. So we came up with this network of TB champions, whereby every voice of a TB survivor or a TB champion is hard and wherever they are facing any challenge at the grassroots level, they are raising it up to the national level and we are able to sit and uh, dialogue with the national TB program and tell them these are the gaps and then we are able to break the gaps and ensure that people with TB are treated with dignity, with respect and they are given an opportunity to continue with life knowing well that uh, TB is just something that when you get, it's an airborne disease that all of us are at risk. When I cough and I have TB and I've not been treated, then I'm exposing everybody. Because our statistics say that one person can affect up to 15 people with tuberculosis. So we, we, we brought in the network so that we can create more awareness and ensure that people all over they know about TB. That TB is not, it's not a disease for the poor, it's a disease that can affect anybody, children, uh, young people, youths, adults, and even senior citizens that are above 60 years. Mm -hmm. And TB is treatable and it is curable. At a space of six months when somebody that has been affected with TB takes treatment and adheres to treatment, then they are back to their normal life. There is no need of stigmatizing people with TB or uh, even uh, some of them were being chased away from school mm -hmm. uh, or uh, from their workplace. 
people are being laid off because they have TB, the bosses are saying that, hey, you might affect us with TB. Mm -hmm. So the network is coming in to, to tell even those employers that this person, once they have been diagnosed with TB, they need this support so that when they are there to treatment and they are well, they get back to their duty. With TB, when you take your medication and you are there to treatment around three weeks, you can't spread the bacteria to anybody. So there's no need of being laid off or mm -hmm. being sent off from school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Timothy, when you came in with the laws and uh, that will govern the treatment of these kind of people who have been stigmatized, what is that particular one thing that you came up with and you see it has worked? Because, uh, like he has mentioned, you came into the case of the TB and now people are getting treatment. How about the HIV? What are some of the laws? Because stigmatization is there. It's only that people don't talk about it, but it has been there and it is still there. Yeah. Uh, and a lot needs to be done. But what are some of the uh, policies that you feel if the government maybe uh, were lenient on this area, then we would be speaking of, speak of a lesser uh, population with HIV? <coughs> oh, okay, thank you very much. So one thing that um, Kelly does is um, one, just trying to sensitize the community about the existing laws and policies that are there. Mm -hmm. And right now, as all of us know, we have a constitution that guarantees and protects the right to health under Article 43. So that is a very good framework that guides all of us that to know that everybody has the right to health, everybody needs to obtain health services, everybody mm -hmm. uh, uh, needs to know that they have rights. That's, that's the starting point. Mm -hmm. um, so with relation to HIV, one, we are starting with the constitution, which is um, the supreme law in Kenya, just to, that, that guarantees us our, our, our rights. So under the constitution, we have the right to health, the right to privacy, the right to dignity, the right to life, and all rights that are guaranteed in the, under the constitution. Then with HIV, uh, as you've rightly said, and as they, uh, as they have shared, there's a lot of, there are, lot, there are a lot of legal issues, and there are a lot of uh, ethical issues. Uh, there's a lot of stigma, there's a lot of discrimination that exists, there's issues of information and all that. So what we do is train uh, and, and, and empower people just to know uh, <coughs> the, the, the rights that they have, the laws that can, the, the frameworks that protect them and how that they can champion for, for their rights. So for example, with HIV, we have the HIV uh, Prevention and Control Act, mm -hmm. which is a law that exists uh, specifically that addresses issues around HIV. So for example, uh, that um, with testing for HIV, there must be consent of the person being tested. Mm -hmm. uh, the law prohibits discrimination of a person based on HIV status. <laughs> so for example, if I need to be employed uh, and somebody asks for my HIV status and denies me the job because of my HIV status, that's a violation of my right. That I cannot be denied education because of my HIV status. And this is in the law. Uh, there is the issue of privacy and confidentiality, which is the one that now leads to a lot of stigma and discrimination that if, if my privacy and confidentiality is breached, mm -hmm. people know about my status, then I, I, I will be able, I'll, I'll face other violations. So the law prohibits uh, disclosure of um, uh, HIV status uh, of a person without their consent. And now we, when we talk to communities, we talk to professionals, we tell them that if you disclose, if somebody discloses your status without your consent, that's a violation of your right and you need to take, to take action. So that is that, that is that. So we, we, and, 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 and um, so we know that we have laws mm -hmm. in place, but the problem at times becomes uh, <coughs> that people might not be aware. One, uh, people do not have this information and violations continue to exist and people brush them off and, and move on as if nothing has happened. So that is the reason why, for example, we work now with uh, every other person, we work with other organizations, the Network of TB Champions, blast just to empower everybody so that we move to the community and empower the community and tell the, and tell the community, tell professionals, tell healthcare workers, tell the government that we need, if we have to deal with HIV and TB, we need to respect rights of people 
and uh, if we protect and respect rights then we'll encourage more people to come out and get tested more people will be willingly going for medication and we'll be able to achieve the targets of ending hiv and tb mm. and maybe just to allude to the case that you talked about um there was uh, there was with tb we know about the infectious nature of tb there is also a lot of stigma and discrimination given that people do not understand uh, TB. And the reaction was that once a person has TB, everybody wants to run away from, from them. And what uh, the measures that were being taken in, uh, at, 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 um, previously was that if you do not adhere <coughs> to medication, then you are jailed, you are taken to jail. Mm -hmm. That, and that is what now we are uh, killing and working with the community and everybody. We said that, no, if a person has uh, TB, we need to provide support to that person right. rather than uh, criminalize uh, the particular person. Mm -hmm. Do we know the reason why this person did not adhere to medication? Do we, have we provided support and all that? So that's why we took, uh, we had the case in court whereby the court declared that uh, jailing of TB patients is unconstitutional and there is need to provide a proper isolation if the um, if if circumstances uh, uh, um, if the circumstances allow so there is need to provide more support rather than uh, penalize or uh, become punitive to people who are who have tb or who have hiv, HIV. Uh, just a quick follow up about the employment if someone is denied uh, a chance because they are HIV positive, considering TB is a airborne disease, how then, if uh, someone has been denied a, a job <coughs> opportunity because of their condition, or maybe uh, they may be under treatment, but still, if the employer feels, I will not have this kind of a person at this particular time, uh, say they are working in an industry where they will, uh, they, there's a big population, would that person be violating their rights? Yes, the, that person will be viola violating their rights. Mm -hmm. So one thing we are saying for HIV and TB, th that these health conditions should not be preconditions for you to, to, get, to, get, to get into employment. Mm -hmm. So, or if I'm in employment, then you want to discontinue my employment because of my HIV status, that's a clear violation of, of the right. So with TB, You've rightly said that TB is, uh, is, 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 is airborne and infectious. So, but we know that the, there's, the, there's an employment law, yeah? There's an employment law in place that, talks, that, that uh, gives you the right to get sick leave, uh, the right to get any other leave that, that you need. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, properly, we know that with TB, once you start your medication, after two weeks, you are no longer infectious. Mm -hmm. So after two weeks, you are no longer infectious, you can come back to your place of work and continue working, such that a person does not need to lose their employment because of their TB status. So what we are saying is mm -hmm. that we make people not to, um, uh, not to adhere to medication because they are afraid of even telling their employers that I have TB because they think mm -hmm. that if I tell my employer, mm -hmm. I'll, be, I'll, uh, my, I'll lose my my job, and that is not the right approach. The approach should be, does the employer have information about TB? Uh, how, what support is the employer giving to the employee so as to ensure that the employee is able to get their medica mm -hmm. medication? Okay. So the support given that maybe they can give the employee some time off, sick, sick off, uh, which is provided for under the law, and also just uh, when this employee comes in, uh, if, if, if it's, a, it's, it's an industrial setting, does that industrial setting have proper ventilation? Does it have, what, are, what is the support system within that place to ensure that uh, people do not become sick and also those who, for example, have TB are supported to continue their medication. Mm -hmm. So that is, so it's just about having the right information and following due procedure supporting rather than uh, uh, the, 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 that the first reaction being denying rights. So the first reaction should be supporting rather than denying rights. So that is what we, we, we advocate for mostly. Uh, Stephen, on, on, on TV now that he has mentioned, uh, you can still undergo uh, or you can be employed because after two weeks, uh, you, are not, you are no longer infectious. But also, uh, 
which other law do you feel or a policy that has been in place and you feel the government should work on this or the stakeholders involved in this particular area, they need to maybe to stretch this a bit or uh, listen this a bit? So uh, j just looking at, uh, thank you very much, just looking at what is available and what can be strengthened. Eh? Uh, in terms of TB, every patient pack, the TB patient pack, which comes in for the patient to take the for six months, it comes in with a with a paper that is called patient charter. Mm -hmm. This patient charter has the rights and responsibilities of a specific patient, and it is for every person that has been affected with TB. Once you start TB medication, that paper is inside. So uh, all patients should be encouraged and should be empowered on that, which tells them about their rights and what they should do when their rights are being violated and what are their responsibilities. It starts from there, information. When you give a, a somebody the correct information, then adherence becomes correct. And then the next level is uh, supporting them to adhere to treatment since you have told them these are your rights, these are your responsibilities. Okay. By doing so, you have reduced the chances of people interrupting or defaulting, defaulting from treatment and then adherence will be good. The other thing is about empowering the community from the grassroots, ensuring that even when the government uh, brings in policies or new guidelines, we are part and parcel. So what the network of TB champions has come in with support from Stop TB Partnership and Kelin is that Wherever there is a new policy in regard to TB, we are first uh, empowered, we give our views, and our views are being put in place. Like when it came, when the isolation policy came, because there is a, an isolation policy, they came and got the views from the people that are affected with TB, because we are the people who know where it hurts or where it pins, and we know what is good for the next person that is being diagnosed today with TB. We know what we went through and we had TB, and we know what is good for anybody that has been affected with TB. So our views are well taken care of, and when they are being put into the policies, we try and, and act as an oversight and monitor if the implementation is done very well. Then when there are those gaps, maybe there is a maybe violation of those things that are being laid, laid down in the policy, then we, we knock on the doors of Kelin to say that here and here, it's where we are seeing this gap. Mm -hmm. This is in the policy, it's in the constitution, it's in the patient charter, but there is somebody somewhere that is violating this right. Maybe it's a healthcare worker, maybe it's an employer, maybe it's a teacher, mm -hmm. anybody can, can be violating these rights without knowing. So Kelin comes in and interprets what the law says and how we should implement. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we do as a network, we train our communities. To, 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 we train them and we empower them more on their rights and what they should do so that they don't raise an issue that is not a violation. Mm -hmm. And they don't be quiet when they are being violated for their self because they are fearing. Mm -hmm. You know most of our community members, they fear that if I'm being violated at this level and I go and uh, I take this to the next level, maybe the court session will take me long or the case will or I'll be banished from my community. So we empower our communities and tell them, no, we are not going to take somebody to court, but we are, we are going to ensure that there is proper implementation of these mm -hmm. policies and these guidelines. So since Kelin has lawyers that are well equipped with this knowledge, they come and empower the communities, mm -hmm. and at some point they also train healthcare workers on how they can protect and promote the rights of people. If we, prom if we promote the rights and we protect people's rights and we ensure that people are adhering to their treatment, then even the TB cases are coming down. Because people are affected when you don't adhere to treatment, high chances of you affecting the next person, you have high chances. They are almost 100%. But when you adhere to your treatment, the, the risk becomes low. So the best place is ensuring that we have better medication, policies are there, and people are protecting the rights of people, then adherence will be smooth. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, uh, Vivian, uh, we're speaking of uh, young people are the most vulnerable among other groups of people. Uh, you have been, I, I believe you've been working closely with uh, young people, other than uh, telling them how to use the use of uh, contraceptives like the condoms. What other programs do you run and uh, what are some of the laws governing that particular area? Okay, <coughs> on what we do basically is when you look at the youths now in Kenya, not even in Kenya, let me say in the world, 
probably they, they don't adhere to medications. So they have a lot of problems facing them. So we, we usually go to on one, one by one. If maybe I know one, one, individu one individually, they'll come to me and I'll get to talk to them. So by then I'll hear out their problems and by that I can get to share with the people who are ahead of me. Maybe I, if it's dealing with TB, I'll have to look for my head on TB, that is Top TB Partnership, and then I'll explain. Maybe the reason the challenge this person is going through is maybe the person is not adhering well to medication because of A, B, and C. And that I'll be able to talk to maybe Steve, and through Steve, he can be able to help me and I'll even connect the person. Then the person might get help. And relating to HIV, I might even talk to another head of mine, maybe in, on the department of HIV. Then maybe if it's adherence or maybe lack of, lack of food or lack of something that is making the fellow person not adhere well, we can look into the issue. Then maybe if I forward the issue, they can handle it. I'm only on the basis of maybe I can help. I'm not, in a, I'm not in the best position to help out, but at least giving that shoulder to lean on or maybe tell me what, what, the, what the problem is, I can get it to share it to another person. Then through that, we can be able to help out. Yeah, uh, that will beg the question. How do you reach out to these people? Do they come to you or how do you get to know, to know them? We go on the ground. I'm, uh, I'm on the community. So basically, I the hospitals or oh yeah, we uh, we we are also based on the ground. As in, I can go maybe on this border border, border people. Mm -hmm. We can go talk to them, and m the chamas. We just it's it's for then us they to will decide. Refer you to yeah, people who are suffering. No, not even people who are suffering. Okay, you know, most of the youth lack knowledge. <laughs> so it's me. It's uh, me being an advocate. It's me to go down to the ground. Mm -hmm. It's not that I know you have TB or I know you have HIV that I have to come to you so that I can give you that knowledge, no. Mm -hmm. I have to go down, me myself, to come to you and tell you anything. So long as even if you're not infected, or if you're not infected, that knowledge is much more important. Mm -hmm. So through that, you'll help tell other people or tell, spread the knowledge to other youths, mm -hmm. then at least they'll get the concept, yeah. So, Timothy, in terms of law, uh, there has been a problem with our country accepting uh, pa to pass a bill or the law on LGBT, and these are the kind of people who are more vulnerable and stigmatized. Uh, as Kaylin, what have you done to ensure that these people are taken care of? <coughs> okay, uh, thank you. So, um, when we started, I mentioned that Kaylin also has a program that works around key and affected uh, populations so and in this sense um, we have programs that target people who are more vulnerable to HIV and we have to also accept the fact that the government itself has recognized in its policies in its strategic plans that we have uh, groups of people who are more vulnerable to uh, HIV mm -hmm. and uh, so we have sex workers for example we have um, men who have sex with men, we have um, injecting drug users, we have people who are in prison, and, 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 any, and, and all other the people who are uh, vulnerable. So, first of all, the government has accepted that when it comes to HIV, mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, the key and affected populations are more vulnerable to HIV and there should be targeted measures towards the, uh, the, the, the key and affected populations. So what Kelin does, one, is following the same model, um, educating people, going to the community and doing trainings, sensitizations, dialogues about the rights. So what is the message that we, we give out? One, everybody has the right to health. Everybody, mm -hmm. regardless of your sexual orientation, regardless of uh, your social status, regardless of any other factor. Article 27 of the Constitution uh, talks about uh, equality and freedom from discrimination. So you cannot discriminate against any person mm -hmm. based on any, based on their status, race, language, sexual orientation, health status, and all that. So that's the starting point, mm -hmm. that everybody has rights. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the right to health. Mm -hmm. So, and in this case, we are saying that given that the key and affected populations are more vulnerable, then we need to have we need to think why are they why are they more vulnerable what 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 is the cause and one thing that has been coming up mostly 
is uh, around the existing laws and policies that are there, that we have populations who have been criminalized, and because they have been criminalized, then access to services for them becomes more difficult. So, for example, I will use an example, for example, of a sex worker. They, we have criminalized sex work. Then, if a sex worker faces violation in the streets, mm -hmm. they, for example, are, are raped in the streets, they fear going to the police station yeah, to report. Yeah, because, and they have, they have shared, we have documentation of this, that if they face violence, in the streets, they fear seeking justice because they think that if I go to a police station, I will be arrested because I'm a sex worker. And they will not go and report the issue that, mm. the, the violence or the issue that has faced them. They are also mocked. Yes, they are mocked and all that. So mm -hmm. same with LGBTI community. We have a law that has said that you are criminalized based on your se uh, sexual orientation. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, now we have, if the person faces violations, they fear accessing services. They face violence from the community. They go, when they go to uh, health uh, centers, then um, they face stigma. They face discrimination, even from health facilities. Mm -hmm. And if a person is facing stigma, discrimination, and all these social exclusion from the society, this person is not able to access services mm -hmm. and what happens what's the what's the consequence of, of that that one means that they are more now because they become more prone to hiv if they have uh, hiv they're not accessing medication and all these issues so that's 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 the messaging that we um one we need to relook at the laws are uh, these laws what's the purpose of these laws are these laws promoting more stigma promoting more discrimination uh promoting more exclusion and if we are saying that the law, there should be no discrimination, that all of us are equal and we are free from discrimination, what's the effect that these laws are having on key and affected populations accessing, specifically, for example, health services? If they cannot access health services, mm -hmm. how are our measures helping to reduce HIV? Okay. Are we, if we reduce HIV among, for example, the general population, and then we leave a certain group to have HIV, are we helping the society? Mm -hmm. That's, those are some of the, the questions. So what Kelin does is we have these dialogues, we have the trainings, we review the laws and policies, we provide feedback to the government about the impact that the laws and policies that they have has on the community. Uh, and we try, we, uh, we've, we've even, we provide access to, to justice. So if a person has first violations, we are able to take their case to, to court and seek justice on their behalf. All right, we are running out of time and I, I want us to get uh, the final question and I'm coming to Timothy. Now, uh, integrating patient-centered care and prevention in your team, what are you doing to ensure that these people now, we have the law in place, we have uh, people to work with like uh, uh, Kaylin, and you in your organization, you're looking to work with these people and ensuring their health has been taken care of. What more thing or other things do you do to ensure that now, with the law and the people affected, we are going to achieve our target? Okay, uh, what we do as the network, uh, they have the structures that we have. We, the network is for all Kenyans, eh? and especially people that are affected with TB. So we have people in counties that go and create awareness in health facilities and empower patients, people that are currently on treatment, by telling them, do you know this is your medication? You should take it for this time. You should adhere. And this is a pack that is called then we have the patient charter. We empower them more on patient charter and how they can report so that they know if uh, I face any violation, I know how to report it. So when we integrate that and we ensure that even the healthcare workers, they know that these are the people's rights and these are how we can support people to adhere to treatment, then they are even them themselves that used to, used to violate their rights uh, using the Public Health Act. Now they are, they are able to say, oh, Kumbe, we have been violating these rights. So we will now reduce the violation. So we start from creating awareness at the ground, then whenever there is any any issue that raises, 
we are able to tackle it from the national TB program. We are able to link up with the TB program. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are out of time. Uh, yes. Just to add on what I was saying, as youth, uh, there, are, there are these support groups that help bring up the youths together whereby they speak out whatever they are going through and all the challenges they are going through and mostly in facilities i can say the facility that i'm a peer mentor in is in coptic that is ngong red and we have these friendly youth peer mentors whereby we we go there then maybe if there's a, there's a youth who has a problem and he or she cannot face be able to face that older person who is a counselor mm -hmm. He can come to us or she can come to us and talk to us as, as a peer mentor. Then we can be able to, maybe if we cannot help to solve that thing at that particular time, we forward it to the now to the counsellor. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, Stephen and Vivian, you'll allow me to give this chance to Timothy to give us uh, the final remarks because we are out of time. It's okay. What will be your final recommendation, sir? <coughs> okay. Um, so thank you very much for hosting us and uh, our final remarks will be around the issues of just the community knowing first of all understanding that we have the right to health uh, we have rights and um, we need to understand the issues we do not we, we should not stigmatize we should not discriminate against we should not violate the rights of other people that are in the community, that we, are able, we will be able to uh, eradicate HIV or we will be able to deal with HIV and eradicate TB mm. if we provide more support rather than mm. uh, stigmatize or discriminate against people. And we have so many programs, we have so many organizations that you can go to to get uh, information, to get support and, 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 all, and all these issues. So yeah, that's mine. That we need to provide more love uh, to people who are affected by TB and HIV rather than stigmatize and discriminate against them uh, in accessing services. All right, I, I see you have a pressing <laughs> issue. And okay, thank you very much. I just wanted to remind our viewers that we celebrate World TB Day on every 24th March, and this year's uh, slogan or theme is It's time for a free TB Kenya. So, Mulika TB, Maliza TB. Mm, all right. <laughs> so, so I think I, I, I would have left that very important information. My, my apologies. Thank you so much for keeping us company. Val will be up next uh, with uh, nutrition. They have been my guests, uh, Timothy Wafula, Vivian Nanyango, and uh, Stephen Wavunga. Uh, Degate Anguva, yes, uh, thank you so much for keeping us company. My name is Dereva Hillary. Now you know the rights governing treatment of HIV and tuberculosis. Be aware and uh, maybe share the information with the rest uh, out there. See you in a bit. Goodbye.